first, I have to ask you very simply, what was your reaction when you heard the verdict, Neil? I think it's, um, Katie, incredibly significant. I think it can be summed up in three words, which is 34 for 45, 34 different criminal convictions for Donald Trump, the 45th president of the United States. Um, that's something that we've just never had happen before in our country. Um, we've never had a former president even accused of a crime, um, let alone convicted. I mean, Richard Nixon came close. He, he worked at it, but he couldn't get quite there. Yeah. Um, but, but you've had that here. And I think there's some people who are saying these aren't as significant as, you know, say the January 6th charges. And I agree with that. I mean, they're not that significant because, you know, launching a coup against the United States is about as significant as it gets, but these aren't insignificant. I mean, the prosecutor, Mr. Steinglass, in the closing argument, his argument to the jury was basically, look, we have a campaign finance system that's all about transparency. You can give money to political candidates, but you got to be open about it. We and the American people need, deserve to know who's giving money and for what thing. And here, what Donald Trump did was to basically obscure right before the 2016 election at the most critical moment, the moment right after, after the Access Hollywood tape was leaked, um, that uh, you know he hid those contributions. And that's what the prosecution was about. That's what the jury found. That's why I think it's so significant. And you've obviously paid attention to the trial. What do you think the defense, what were the defenses, what was the def weakness of the defense? Was it just the facts were working against them and they couldn't, you know, make a silk purse out of a sow's ear? I, I would say the weakness of the defense is they didn't have a defense. Um, all they wanted to do was put the prosecution's case uh, and challenge it, you know, and say Michael Cohen, they're one of their key witnesses, wasn't credible. But there was no affirmative story of how their story made any sense. I mean, why would Michael Cohen on his own just decide to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to someone, particularly when you had documentary evidence and testimony that said Donald Trump watched every dollar that came out of his account? Like, you, who would do that? You also had recordings and Lisa Ferry, who's my friend who's been down at the courthouse, was saying one of the things the jurors asked for, Neil, were some of these were headsets so they could ostensibly listen to some of the conversations. I guess I'm not sure if this is definitely what they were listening to, but she was saying some of the audio submissions and forgive me if I'm not using the right legal terms were conversations between Michael Cohen and Donald Trump basically discussing this whole thing. Yeah. And so so the jury heard that both at the trial and then I suspect also on the headphones. I'm not sure exactly what they heard like you, but I think the most important point for our viewers to understand is how the criminal jury system works. It's different than the civilian one because like New York, like almost every state and now the Supreme Court's required it, the prosecution has to, to prove to all 12 jurors that Trump committed the crimes and they have to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt, which is the mm -hmm. most difficult standard in all of American law. So you've got two, if you're the prosecution in any case, you've got two really big hurdles that you have to jump. And it's always scary as a prosecutor, and I've been on that side, because you never know. One juror might just be like, hey, I just don't think the evidence was there, or so on. So it's always a scary thing to bring a prosecution, and certainly the scariest to bring one for the first time in history against a former president who's about to attack you every which way from Sunday. And that's, of course, what Trump did, and that's, of course, what failed today. All 12 jurors, beyond a reasonable doubt, Trump committed these, and not minor things, 34 crimes, felonies. Right. right. And, and so help people understand how significant it is to be convicted of a felony, even if Donald Trump and his lawyers appeal this case. Um, how, how consequential is it, Neil, in terms of the kind of jobs you can have and the kinds of opportunities that are closed to you as a result of this kind of conviction in our society? I mean, 
like you can't work at Starbucks. I mean, start things like Starbucks. I mean, you know, the idea that he could run for president. I mean, there isn't a formal prohibition against it, but that's just because no president for office has been so lawless as this guy. So yes, I think ingrained into the DNA of the American system is if you've been convicted of a crime. Now, obviously, you've been accused whole different matter. Right. And I will be the first to say, you know, don't hold an accusation against someone. But now you've had a jury of this guy's peers saying you did it. You did it 34 times. These are felonies. Um, that to me is incredibly significant. I, I'm not a politician. I'm not going to assess the political consequences. But I will say anyone who's been in touch with the legal system understands just how significant this is you and can't it be, a, be you can't be a member of congress right if you're convicted of a felony no and you can't, you can't vote i mean you know so like i mean this is this is a serious thing and and it should be treated that way i know donald trump is gonna try and make fun of it and attack the institution attack the jury attack the, the criminal justice system attack the judge but it's really hard i mean that's the genius of our founders our founders said look we know criminal defendants are going to attack judges. That's why we have a right to a jury trial, because just in case the judge is in cahoots with the prosecutor and in cahoots with the grand jury, we're going to have another independent check, which is a jury of your peers, and you have a bedrock right to that in our American system. That's like why people like my parents came to this country because of that system of checks and balances. And we're watching it play out in real time right now tonight. And it's the system working, Katie. That's the story tonight. And Neil, so the sentencing has been scheduled for July 11th before the Republican National Convention. Can you just tell us briefly what, now the judge will make a decision, right? On what happens to Donald Trump. And he has a number of options is my understanding. Can you take us through those options? Yeah, I'm not an expert on New York sentencing. So I just wanna warn our viewers, like I'm, I'm more of a federal person, but I would just say in general, the way sentencing works is you'll hear and you'll have a pre-sentencing report and kind of the prosecutors saying, here's what we think is appropriate. The defense will file their brief saying, presumably no jail time is appropriate. And the judge is then gonna have a hearing on all of those questions. I do think that here, the gravity of the charges is so significant. It's hard to say that Trump would get off with just a fine. I know this is a fairly new theory of prosecution in New York. And so there may be questions on appeal about it. I don't think they're going anywhere. I think Trump's going to lose them. But they'll undoubtedly try and throw that up before the jury, excuse me, before the judge on September 11th, on, uh, on July, July 11th, 11th. Uh, July 11th um, to, in order to try and say he shouldn't be sentenced to imprisonment. I suspect that will fail. The harder question for the judge is, is it imprisonment in New York penitentiary? Or is it imprisonment in a kind of home confinement system? What are the Secret Service implications? What are the other implications and the like? But given the gravity of the charges, it's very hard to say that Trump goes off with just a fine. I mean, every day in New York, better for better or worse, people are going to jail for far, far less serious offenses than what Donald Trump is accused of. Wow. I mean, it's it's pretty amazing. And, and I now convicted of. Yeah, I think, yes. And I think we've become inured to all these trials and all these legal uh, processes. And, and this is, as you said, very significant. And now he faces three more other trials, right? And what impact do you think this will have on those, Neil? I think it's such an important question, Katie, because one of the things Trump is a master of is like, because he commits so many crimes and so many offenses, you kind of can't keep track of them all. And it's like- And your oh, eyes system... start to glaze over, unfortunately. Right, exactly. And like the system's out to get him. The other story, which I think we're seeing come forth tonight is, no, dude, you're a serial criminal and you commit crime after crime. And the result is you're gonna be held to account. And this is the first day of reckoning. There will be more days of reckoning for Donald Trump. That's frankly, in my opinion, why he's running because he, wants to get some sort of immunity 
for these cases. Um, and apart from the Supreme Court has a case now about that question about past immunity when you were president. But I think most constitutional scholars believe that if you are a sitting president, you can't be indicted, you can't be convicted. It's a temporary get out of jail free card for those four years. And I think that is a huge part of why Donald Trump is running today. And so that's going to bring what do you think the Supreme Court is going to decide about a former president, though? And I think they're going to decide ultimately that he is going to be liable for January 6th, that he doesn't have immunity. But I think they're going to decide it late enough that it'll be an open question. Could Donald Trump be hot, be tried in that case before the before the November election? And so this case today is incredibly significant, Katie, because regardless what happens in the January 6th federal case or the Georgia case, Donald Trump now stands as a convicted felon in New York. And even if he wins on appeal, does that change anything, Neil? Uh, it sure could change things. Um, you know, the appeal is going to take a long time. Um, and I, as I said before, I don't think he's got a leg to stand on. I think he got absolutely obliterated at the trial. I think he had no defense. I think the jury saw that. And reversing a jury conviction is incredibly difficult to do. So I don't think he's got anything, but, you know, he's certainly within his rights to try. And who decides if he is granted an appeal? So uh, the, court, the, the New York Intermediate Court is going to decide that, and then possibly New York's highest court, the New York Court of Appeals. So this is a process that's going to take years. And I think one thing our viewers should know is that on July 11th, even if the jury, excuse me, even if the judge does find that he should be sentenced to jail, um, Trump will file a motion for what's called bail pending appeal, which will almost certainly be granted, which is a piece of paper that says, look, don't jail me until my appeal is decided. I have credible legal issues. And that legal standard is pretty good for Trump. So I don't think we're talking about the prospect of Trump being jailed pending his appeal before the November election. I think what we're talking about is Trump being convicted, as he has been tonight, being sentenced to jail, and then having that go up on appeal, and then the judges on appeal deciding what to do. It looks like we're in for a lot more legal wranglings when it comes to Donald Trump. And I know you, you don't like to and don't feel comfortable talking about the political ramifications of this, but does it surprise surprise you that he has so much support despite the fact that he is a convicted felon and many people believe that this won't change a lot of minds again that, that's really out of my wheelhouse i will just say but just as, you know, a, as, as a u.s citizen yeah no and as a, as a you know someone who teaches criminal law i can tell you criminal defendant after criminal defendant receive all sorts of support. There are TV show after TV shows dedicated to precisely that theme, Katie. But at the end of the day, I would be surprised if the American public didn't take this into significant consideration. We're talking about a guy who is now an adjudicated lawbreaker, a convict, a felon. That are, those are not words we associate with being, of withholding the highest office in the land.